and those that are viewed as leaders by their peers um, are going to have more opportunities and, and you know, be able to carve out their path a little bit easier um, because uh, you know, they're going to separate themselves from the pack. Do you ever have so many questions and no one to ask, so they're just wasting away on Google searches you'll forget about in an hour or so? We had that same problem, and that's why we created the rd to be podcast, a resource for dietetic and nutrition students looking for answers that their peers don't have. We are students Macy and Emily and registered dietitian Carl Barnes. We engage in conversations and learn from RDs. Join us weekly as we gain insight into the unique journeys of registered dietitians all over the country. Welcome back to another week of the RD2B podcast. I'm your registered dietitian host, Carl Barnes. Uh, this is our podcast where each week we sit down with a different registered dietitian um, to not just give feedback and advice to RD2Bs across the, the spectrum on their journey, um, but to really highlight the diversity of opportunity in the nutrition field um, in terms of just the limitless opportunities of, of where you can find yourself working all along your career. Um, so we're, we're trying to highlight uh, just all sorts of different practice fields, and we haven't gone a whole lot into industry, and that's a pretty big umbrella, um, but uh, very excited to, to dig in a little bit more. So this week, we're um, sitting down with Keith. He's a registered dietitian with Orgain. Uh, thanks so much for, for being here, and I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks, Carl. Thanks for having me. Uh, yes, my name is Keith Hine. I'm a dietitian. Um, been with uh, Orgain since 2016, and I run their healthcare and their sports franchises. And um, been a dietitian now. Gosh, can't believe it. It's been almost 25 years. So uh, look forward to um, the discussion that we're about to have. Thank you, Keith. My name is Macy. I'm an RD2B at the University of Maryland. I'm just going to start off the podcast by asking you, why did you first decide to become an RD and what kind of drives you in this field? Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, I think like a lot of us that have become a dietitian, um, or at least many that I've talked to, uh, we um, we're probably interested in sports and health and wellness, which I was, and I was a pretty avid soccer player. And so I got introduced to um, dietary supplements and sports nutrition um, to some degree, um, but uh, didn't really think I had a real clear path when I went to college other than thinking, well, maybe something along those lines, but, um, or maybe even being a uh, going into food service, but uh, I had a uh, um, counselor that said, hey, you need to take a nutrition class. Why don't you take that? And, and uh, I took that and that's when, you know, the, it just, uh, the light went off in my head, I guess. And it became really clear that, hey, that's something that really interests me. It combines a lot of different um, passions I had at that time as a, as a young person and uh, felt like um, that would be great to pursue when I found out, hey, you can become a dietitian and make a career out of this. Um, I, was, uh, I was fully vested at that point. And, um, and so I had no idea about what dietitians were. And I learned uh, along the way and was uh, so happy I made that career choice. And I guess what drives me um, uh, for me, I, I like a lot of dietitians. I love the the education and the counseling side of things. Um, so I'm over on the business and industry side. So a lot of what I do is not counseling and educating consumers or patients on certain things related to nutrition interventions. Um, but it's working with fellow dietitians and helping them and supporting them and helping. Uh, to broaden their tool belt, if you will, of different types of products and solutions and services that can help them uh, make a difference in the lives of their patients or clients. So when I'm getting an opportunity, whether it's you know one-on-one -on -one with a dietitian or speaking in, in large group settings, um, or even like this, when I get to mentor young dietitians, when I'm helping and educating and sharing what I know, um, for me, that's that's that's, that's what really gets me um, excited about um, the, um, the profession and, and utilizing my experiences. So have you always been comfortable um, in teaching people in public speaking and being in the industry, business industry? 
Uh, no, <laughs> I learned that along the way. Um, uh, that that is uh, something for me. I'm I'm naturally probably more of an introvert, but um, but when needed, and and I've become more comfortable to be extroverted. So um, along the way during the years, I've had opportunities to teach uh, uh, courses at a collegiate or college level. Um, I've taken a lot of um, professional speaking courses. Uh, and just have had experiences where I've been on stage presenting to hundreds or maybe thousands of folks, um, as well as um, just small intimate settings. So all those experiences sort of sharpen the sword and create that confidence muscle that you can do that type of work. Um, and uh, you know, for, for me, uh, I was very much committed to being a clinical dietitian and that's what I loved. And I had a board certification in nutrition support and was doing that at a fairly large, fairly large medical center. Um, but, um, and just so happened, I had opportunities to move up and became a clinical nutrition manager and had a number of dietitians uh, reporting to me. And as a result, I was on various committees and I had uh, sales reps and other um, industry folks interacting with, with me and learn a little bit more about their type of work and uh, realized, hey, there, there might be more for me than just clinical dietetics. So I took that, that leap of faith and went over to industry. And um, uh, I was not so sure about that decision right away because um, I was still very much vested to being a clinical dietitian. But once I learned that you know, what I was doing was more consultative type of support, and I was in a sales rep position for one of the large medical nutrition companies out there, and uh, once I realized what I was doing, it was not so much in my mind and how I validated the work was not really selling. I was just sharing what I knew and, and helping them. And um, if they happen to buy uh, you know, one of our products, great. But if I help them um, become more efficient and, and uh, be able to make more of a difference in their patients' lives, that's really what um, I enjoyed. And I think that authenticity sort of separated me from others. So. Um, and that's, you know, that's it's still today, you know, what I really enjoy is just that education and teaching component, um, sharing what I know. So what are the some of the challenges you face um, as a sales rep? Uh, well, I think just like any type of sales type position, um, uh, there's often a lot of preparation and um, uh, investment of time for different types of opportunities where you think there's a good fit between your products and your company um, and um, the hospital or facility or whatever you might be presenting, selling to. And so a lot of work goes into it. And then sometimes it's just not right timing. You know, it's just that there's not the right people to make a decision. Um, and um, so you have to sometimes just be, you know, very patient and, and manage expectations, have a lot of irons in the fire and not to put, uh, um, not to put too many eggs in one basket. Um, and, and I think um, that's also one of the benefits too, is you get the, a lot of freedom to be somewhat of an entrepreneur in a way when you're in a selling type of role, you get to figure out um, you know, what are some of the best ways to hit your, uh, your numbers and, and how to go about doing that and that entrepreneurial type of work um, that I got exposed to when I first went over to industry um, was really enjoyable and I didn't necessarily have that as a clinical dietitian or clinical nutrition manager. I certainly had as in those roles, I had some flexibility in how I conducted myself and how I got the work done, but uh, I found there's much more freedom to operate um, when I was uh, uh, over on industry side. And I realized that, hey, I really liked that. And that was, I would have never discovered that if I never took that leap of moving over to industry from, from clinical dietetics. So to go a little bit more into your current industry, your current job, um, what is Orgain and what benefits does Orgain provide to individuals compared to other products? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Orgain was uh, founded by uh, Andrew Abraham, a physician and cancer survivor uh, back in 2009, and he's still um, the, uh, very much involved in the CEO of the organization and someone I fortunately get to work closely with. 
And um, so we're all about it here at Orgain is uh, producing nutritional products, whether it's ready to drink shakes or powders or bars. Um, we, we have a lot of products now um, that um, just try to be as high quality as possible. So we really search for the highest quality ingredients um, and try to make them as delicious as possible. And so um, it's more almost in a way we talk about sort of what we don't have in our products is what separates us. So we don't have things like genetically modified organisms. So there's no soy, there's no corn or corn syrup, um, carrageenan and artificial colors and flavors and artificial sweeteners and preservatives. So just high quality um, types of products and almost 90% um, of our product line is USDA certified organic as well. Um, we have a lot of plant-based options as well as a lot of on our dairy side, grass-fed dairy options. So there's a lot of demand for that type of um, um, nutrition options, um, both from clinicians as well as uh, individual consumers. So we're providing that option um, as an alternative to those conventional brands out there. And so, um, and for me, it's just, it's, it's great because uh, it's, um, it's something I believe in. Um, and uh, it's, you know, from my experiences, it allows me to really tap into those experiences um, when I'm talking about these products and sort of differentiating or gain versus some of the others. So are you involved at all in um, continuing to develop the product? Well, um, uh, fortunately, um, I do have, um, I guess, a seat at the table for some products that have a application within healthcare or medical types of uh, utilizations. So um, there are um, projects that um, I'm involved with, um, as well as when products are getting close to launch, um, they will speak with me. Um, and see how you know I can utilize um, and promote market and sell those within the healthcare channel as well as with sports teams. So and there may be an opportunity to make some uh, adjustments to whether it be claims or some packaging. Um, but we have a great team at Oregon that does that for uh, the most part for all of our products. So uh, when I get pulled in, it's really a it's really a great opportunity. Um, uh, and I enjoy that um, and get to tap a little bit into an experience I had when I worked for a food ingredient manufacturer um, and was working um, with a variety of food technologists and um, product development teams at uh, major dietary supplement, nutraceutical, medical foods companies. And so I learned a lot along the way on food science. As a dietitian, we get exposed to some of those food science courses, but um, not as much as, as I wish I did. And so I got to see that a little bit more in a practical way when I was doing that type of work. And so a lot of those learnings on food science and how products get created um, has um, resonated with me. And I get to tap into that when I get to work a little bit on, on new product development. So how long were you working in that type of position? And how did you get that opportunity? On the ingredient side, I did that. Uh, so I worked for a company called Roquette. So they're um, one of the largest um, uh, carbohydrate derivative manufacturers um, in the world. And they're based out of France. And, uh, and one of the uh, fun parts of that job is I got to travel a little bit internationally. Um, and so uh, that one really was just the, the timing was right after leaving Abbott. and. Um, they were really looking for somebody with uh, two novel ingredients. They had a um, prebiotic um, soluble fiber um, that they wanted to bring into the US and need some help with uh, um, applications in the medical area uh, and was looking for someone with my background. And then they also um, were one of the first companies to produce uh, pea protein. I think a lot of us have heard about pea proteins and a lot of products. So I helped to, and I played a small role amongst many bringing um, pea protein uh, more prominent or bringing pea protein into the U.S. And so I got to work with a variety of uh, food technologists and, and companies to uh, put pea protein into those finished products. And it's always great to see when you um, work with that, that team and it's a quite of a quite a process to take a concept and uh, present it and work on prototypes with them and then um, help them with the, the marketing and then see that product go into, uh, into the market on the shelf. So 
Um, I had no idea ingredient companies work that closely with uh, manufacturers um, with new product development um, and was fortunate I was with a company that really was established in that way, not only with their um, expertise with ingredients, but also with their expertise with uh, product development. And that's, um, that's how we kind of differentiated ourselves. And so it was a great learning experience and get, get to tap into that still today. That's really awesome. And it makes you kind of think about what other proteins will be available in the future. Um, so what exactly do you do now in your current job on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, um, a little bit of everything. Um, so, um, so, um, so, you know, I, I mentioned uh, our founder, Andrew Abraham, and he and I started talking back in 2016 um, because he was having increasingly more dietitians and healthcare professionals saying, hey, well, you know, can I get samples or, you know, can, can this, dis, you know, can I distribute this product? You know, how much should we sell it for? And he was you know, CEO of a, a growing company, just didn't have time for that. So he's looking for some way to really take this over. And um, so when he and I started talking, um, he said, Keith, I really just want you to sort of pioneer or gain into healthcare. And that's really still how I see it today is that entrepreneurial type of role. And it's sort of a, a business within a business, even though we're very, you know, um, you know, everything we do is related to or game, but I have some of, the, of that freedom to operate to um, really grow our presence within um, the healthcare channel. And then over the last few years, the sports team channel as well. Um, so, um, you know, everything from overseeing our, our marketing, um, you know, we have a, a great marketing team. I'm fortunate to be surrounded by individuals that have way more skill and expertise than I do. And, um, you know, I focus on the unique things that I can do, um, but I um, really enjoy um, just some of the work that I get to do is just interacting with dietitians every day and helping them understand why Orgain is different, whether that's in a one-on-one um, -on -one setting, whether that's presenting, um, whether that's working with um, subject matter experts and arranging webinars, whether it's working with um, uh, experts to develop content that we can communicate to healthcare professionals or, or sports teams, dietitians on, on something relevant in nutrition that ties back to Orgain and, you know, points of differentiation we offer. Um, or it's directly working with, you know, major health systems or distributors um, to have them bring the product in so that it's available to their patients or clients. Um, as well as just managing just sort of the day-to-day -day operation um, of everything we, we have going on. So um, there's, there's a lot that I, I get to be involved with as well as innovation on um, different uh, new ways that we can, um, you know, uh, communicate to healthcare professionals, whether it's podcasts, like we're working on our own podcast series that we'll be rolling out very soon. We have an app that we're um, about to uh, launch for healthcare professionals. So they have all the information about Orgain and the access of their hands and then in, in their phone that is as readily accessible. Um, I just worked on uh, helping Orgain put together an advisory board of all dietitians that are thought leaders in their specific fields um, that we can tap into, whether it's for marketing, product development, or just uh, how we can differentiate um, with claims and messaging. So um, I get to do a lot of really fun things. Um, and, um, you know, some of the most enjoyment I have is, you know, when pre-COVID I could get out in front of a group of dietitians and just talk about Orgain or when we have uh, conferences and there's events where I get to have a booth with a team and, you know, we get to talk with um, dietitians or docs or whoever it might be that's interested and, and help them understand why Orgain is unique and how it can benefit them. And just that collaboration on various opportunities and always being entrepreneurial, thinking about not just, you know, what, how, what I can do, but what, what, what could we do? Um, and, and having the support from leadership that allows me to do that is really uh, amazing. And that's what I love about Orgain. Yeah, I like how you seem to be always growing and working always seems to be what thinking about what the next thing is that they could be doing. Um, so that probably relates to the dietetic field in general. So how have things changed in your experience in the dietetic field since you're first starting as an RD? And what do you want to see in the future? Mm -hmm. Well, um, when I started, it was a 
uh, the most common path was going right into some sort of entry level hospital um, based position. And that certainly was a path I followed. And, and I, I, you know, at that point in time, that's what I wanted to do. And, and maybe it's because I didn't know any better because there were not as many options. Um, but uh, uh, for me, that seemed to be the path that was right. And, and um, but there's so many more paths that can be right for so um, many um, different types of individuals entering this field, uh, whether they have more of a, a sports mindset and they want to work in, in sports um, um, with a with a collegiate team, a high school team, um, you know, Olympic athletes, uh, professional. Um, there's you know now there's dietitians, um, multiple dietitians um, within within the sports and uh, ranks and even on the tactical military side as well. Um, uh, there's so much more um, around just opportunities to have a presence online, whether you want to have a telemedicine, telehealth type of consulting, you want to be a professional blogger, you want to be an influencer for certain brands, an ambassador for brands. Um, there's just so many more opportunities um, than there ever were uh, when I started. And now that we have reimbursement and, and reimbursement is growing. So I think that's also great for our profession. Uh, I just hope that we continue as, as, as a profession just um, growing in terms of raising awareness of the role of, of dietitians um, so that um, we don't get crowded out by other um, um, healthcare professionals or others that want to tap into um, um, sort of our lane, uh, you know, where we're, you know, the thought leaders um, as it relates to food and nutrition um, for optimizing health, wellness, and for uh, different disease states. And I think that's what we need to um, continue to sort of set guardrails around, hey, that's, that's, our, that's our lane, that's what we're really good at, um, and, uh, and continue to communicate and promote and billboard why dietitians um, should be the expert in this area um, and because um, you know nutrition is on the minds of so many more individuals uh, than ever before and it's a you know it's a ripe opportunity for um, individuals um, that don't have that background to parlay themselves into our field and sort of um, you know ultimately um, you know maybe um, communicate and articulate messages um, around health and wellness that are not science-based, evidence-based, and, and ultimately may do more harm and kind of um, make the field of nutrition go backwards instead of forward. So I think dietitians have the right training and the background to um, help the profession, you know, differentiate and move in the right direction. I just hope that it continues to be that way and it's not other professions kind of sort of taking that, um, taking that flag away from us. So when you're talking to people about Orgain, what are some of the questions that come up that are, that can be hard to answer? Um, gosh, um, uh, sometimes the, the most challenging um, questions are related to um, what we don't have. Um, so, uh, you know, for me, um, in the, um, the healthcare channel, uh, there's still a lot of interest in, for example, calorically dense types of products. And um, uh, we position ourselves as an option versus conventional brands, but a lot of those conventional brands have different alternatives are more calorically dense for let's say a cancer patient or someone with cystic fibrosis or somebody with ALS that has high calorie needs but has low volume um, 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 requirements. And so that can be sometimes challenging. So we talk about um, how it can be worked into um, a regimen with other products that are more calorically dense. And then also quite honestly, um, I talk very candidly from my um, background around food technology that uh, some of those products that are more calorically dense um, tend to be challenging to consume repeatedly because uh, the micronutrients in a lot of those products um, being more viscous because it's more calorically dense sit on your palate longer and that's where you get that negative feedback loop people don't like micronutrients. They like them in there on the nutrition facts panel, but when you actually have to consume them, especially when it's a, um, in a calorically dense uh, delivery system, 
um, it doesn't necessarily generate um, a behavior that says to that individual, I want to drink more of this. And so that's really some of the work that we're trying to figure out too. And, um, but we don't have a solution for that. And, and so, you know, I feel bad because we try to try to have uh, uh, with all the many products that we are, um, that, that we have and that we're producing that we have an option for just about every type of uh, application, but we don't, don't for that. And there's some other examples like that, but that's okay. We, what, I, what I try to do is bring, bring folks back to, okay, you know, what is it that we do have that is a good fit versus so much, you know, what we don't have. And uh, oftentimes there's a lot of interest to, to have an option like what we have, something that's plant-based, it's something that doesn't have controversial ingredients and in it's something that's organic, something that tastes great, um, is a great alternative because so many consumers and patients of dietitians and healthcare professionals are looking for something like that. And there really wasn't anything out there until Orgain entered into the market. So I'm gonna go into your experiences with West Virginia University. Okay. I know you attended there um, for your DPD, your DI, and your master's program. So how did West Virginia help you adapt to your first job outside of West Virginia? Um, well, my, my first job, interestingly, was um, just in these um, kind of the outer rim of Morgantown, a smaller town called Fairmont, the hospital there where I got to uh, uh, work uh, was my first role while a dietitian was on maternity leave. Um, and that was a great experience. Um, and then that gave me exposure to Sodexo because Sodexo was running the food service um, uh, inside of that hospital. And, um, and uh, I, I thought uh, that might be a great um, company to uh, work for because they have uh, hospital contracts around the U.S. So uh, so one thing led to another and I took uh, my kind of my first first kind of full time position because that was temporary um, right after school where I was at and then I took the full time one in Charleston, West Virginia, which is the capital of West Virginia, a small hospital where I got to do everything so I was. <laughs> um, so I was on P&T committees, I was uh, uh, one a dietitian of one and so. Uh, at a small hospital where I got to uh, get exposed to a lot of different things, but we grew it and I added on several dietitians. Um, and uh, then um, at that time was also doing a little bit of teaching on the side and took the time also to work on my board certification and nutrition support. Um, and so, um, and then that led to opportunities to move to North Carolina with Sodexo and, and take on nutrition support roles at some larger hospitals. Um, but my time at West Virginia was great because um, I, I love the school. I'm a proud uh, mountaineer, but I uh, was able to do my bachelor's and my master's degree there. So, and then the internship. And that was the first year they had the internship um, uh, combined with a master's degree. So I was in the very first class. And so to me, that was special to help shape that. And I wanted to do that. Um, I was the president of our Student Diet Tech Association at the time. And I got to um, know the professors and instructors and who would be there. And so for me, it was a perfect fit if I can make it work because I already knew um, the program. I knew the instructors that were for my bachelor's degree would be some of the same instructors for a master's degree. Um, and then just to be a part of helping to shape that program for future generations of dietitians was really attractive. And so I was very fortunate when I matched with my homeschool and uh, I consider myself very lucky for that because I know that doesn't always happen. And, um, um, but then just having that master's degree for me was really helpful um, because um, the undergraduate degree was great exposure to a lot of different facets of nutrition, but with the master's, I got to really focus um, to, in the areas I wanted to learn more about, which was some of the, more of the science. I mean, I felt like um, for me, I wanted, to, I wanted to differentiate myself as a dietitian by really being able to synth synthesize the science and translate that into something that m made sense. And, but I felt like I needed to know more on physiology, you know, you know, um, understand nutrition at further at a more of a scientific level than what we got exposed to. And the biochemistry additional courses were, were great. So, and, and it was great because I got to do the, take a few classes at a time while also working on my rotations and, uh, 
um, it, for me, it helped to just advance my knowledge and help my confidence muscles. Once I started practicing as a dietitian, I felt like um, at that time, not, not all dietitians had a master's degree. It's much more common. Of course, now it's going to be a requirement soon, but um, I felt like um, that was for me helpful because it just felt like, you know, I could um, speak more authoritatively and more confidently by having that additional training. And, and, uh, and that just, of course, has um, parlayed itself to every position I've had since then. So how was your experience doing both the master's and your program at the same time? And what would you change about the program? Uh, it was, it was good. Um, I, you know, it, it was the first class. So, you know, we were, we were helping them as much as they were helping all of us interns, uh, you know, with the necessary requirements to uh, sit for the exam. Um, but, uh, you know, I, it was a long time ago. I can't think of anything um, specifically that, that wasn't really ideal. Um, other than, you know, I, I remember having a lot of time, um, spent, um, after the internship really preparing for the RD exam. And so, uh, probably like a lot of folks who, you know, you, you get to that point, you want to make sure or try to pass it on the first time. And, uh, so you, you take review courses, you study online and, and at that time, there wasn't anything like that other than like a, a weekend type of um, training curriculum that I took. And I, part of me was thinking, gosh, I wish I got a little bit more of that preparation so I could, you know, ease into that mindset of taking the RD exam um, after the internship. But I wanted to make sure I passed. And so I, you know, invested the time and effort to take the, those review courses. So um but you know i think that's still pretty common today it's just a lot to absorb when you're going from a bachelor's degree into your internship and then you sit for the exam there's a lot that they ask you to know and you do want to you do want to try to pass it uh so you don't have to go through that process uh, a second or third time um but it, it was a great experience because i got um it was a really well balanced type of internship because i got um, a healthy amount of clinical community uh, and food service and clinical was in a lot of different types of settings, hospital and outside the hospital. Um, and I just remember um, probably one of the most special experiences I had um, was like that first time you put on a lab coat um, when you're an intern and, and you're walking in the hospital and you might be walking into the hospital with docs and surgeons and nurses and and you just feel like, you know, he, okay, this, this is pretty cool. Uh, you know, there's a certain level of like, okay, I've arrived and I'm here to make a difference. I'm here to work. I'm here to apply my knowledge. Um, and I, and I want to make a difference. And so, um, you know, it kind of felt special, like, okay, all the work I put into, I'm walking into a, a setting where people need me and I want to, and I want to make a difference. And so I really looked up to the dietitian mentors I had, and they really were great in helping to, um, you know, teach me as well as uh, stretch me into areas that I had never been exposed to and, and, and help me learn. And, and um, you know, I'm, I've been always appreciative of that. And I think that's why I still, you know, like to do things like this or where I have opportunities to mentor and help others because it was so valuable to me when I was starting out. That's awesome. Mentoring definitely has the most benefits I've experienced so far. Um, but you mentioned earlier that you wanted to differentiate yourself as an RD by knowing the science behind things. Mm -hmm. So do you still use resources to stay up to date on the latest nutritional data or information? I don't have the time that I used to have uh, with, with, um, with my work. It seems like every position um, um, I've had, and I think a lot of career professionals, you know, you, you, your position you have after the prior one is just a little bit more scoped up, more responsibility, and you're, you know, a lot more of what I do is oversight and leadership um, um, versus getting into some of the specific topics. I do miss that, um, uh, but um, a lot of what I still try to do um, today to stay current is just through interactions with folks that really know what they're talking about. Um, so the subject matter experts that we um, have that help us with content, um, just tapping into them and talking with them helps me stay 
um, current. And, and, and I've always sort of positioned myself as, as a generalist, and I don't see that as a bad thing. I, a generalist that I, you know, I can talk a, on most topics um, related to nutrition, or at least I once could, you know, relatively confidently. It's a little bit harder now because nutrition has, you know, grows every year, our body of knowledge um, evolves. Um, and I get further away from the day-to-day -day application of nutrition science. Um, but, um, you know, a lot more of what I'm thinking about is, is taking what I know about nutrition and applying it in different types of marketing vehicles or business opportunities or entrepreneurial type of opportunities. So I love that I get to tap into that, but I, 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 but I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I wasn't a registered dietitian. It's um, that instant credibility you get and being able to separate yourself from others and um, being on the front lines as I had been um, in different settings as a clinical dietitian. Um, uh, stays with me and it really gives me that comfort level when I'm walking into a health system or walking into a physician practice. I, I feel like I, that's, that's my comfort zone. Um, even still today, um, I'm more of sort of a marketer and business operator, but I still kind of in my DNA, I'm, I'm a dietitian and, you know, I like to be in that clinical setting. That's my comfort. And, um, so, um, yeah, I think, I think, uh, uh, just having still every day I'm talking with dietitians um, on all different sorts of topics where how we can work together, collaborate, work on projects. Um, and so just that interaction every day with the dietitians, I pick up nuggets here and there to help me stay current and, and keep me at least somewhat of a functional generalist dietitian. Um, uh, but, you know, no one should rely on any nutrition counseling I provide directly. <laughs> Oh, There's experts like you guys coming out in the field that will be doing that a lot better than I, I can. So reflecting on your experience as an undergrad and in your dietetic internship, what has been the most memorable or valuable experience? Um, well, I think during my undergrad, um, I think I mentioned participating with our Student Dietetic Association. So having involvement with that group was really enjoyable. I, I developed some relationships with um, my, um, uh, you know, with others going through the same program at the same time. And uh, a lot of those relationships, almost all of them I'm, uh, are still, um, still exist today. And so, um, and we get to, you know, keep up with each other and, and what they're doing. And, and oftentimes there's opportunities there too, because what they're doing um, might dovetail with what I'm doing or working on and, and vice versa. So it's uh, opened up a lot of doors. So that, that involvement with the Student Dietetic Association was, was great. And I enjoyed that. And the time I got to lead that for, for a period was, was really enjoyable. Um, um, you know, the, the, the internship, I think, you know, just, just one, like I mentioned, um, uh, when you're in that situation where, um, uh, you know, maybe you don't have your preceptor around, you're in the ICU and the surgeon comes up and you're working with somebody and trying to get them off the ventilator and the surgeon doesn't know you're an intern or dietitian or whatever, he just knows you're working on something nutrition related and you get into a discussion around, what is it that you're recommending in terms of uh, adjustments with their nutrition to help them um, wean off the ventilator faster and get out of the ICU and, and get into a, a lower cost or you know a more amenable type of uh, setting? Uh, um, then um, you you know you feel like that's pretty pretty damn rewarding um, to to uh, just be recognized as somebody who's a part of a team and and can can contribute and so. Um, those those occasions when I had that opportunity as an intern really uh, sort of clarified and crystallized, I guess, for me that, hey, um, I want to be with someone who really knows the science and I want to be able to be comfortable approaching the docs and the other healthcare professionals with what I know and be a member of the team and, and contribute and ultimately hopefully make a difference with those patients. And I think that's why I went more towards nutrition support and critical care as a clinical dietitian, because I felt like for me, that was where my comfort zone was, where I could apply the science and especially as it relates to um, uh, enteral and parenteral feeding. And so um, got to do some pretty neat things with different groups of uh, surgeons and especially neurosurgeons when I was working um, on their, um, with, with their patients. So, um, so for me, that was a, 
that was really rewarding and I enjoyed that. And I think just having that brief exposure during my internship sort of solidified that's what I wanted to do. And that's why I went that route. So have you ever felt that you weren't respected by other healthcare professionals? I think so, yeah, certainly. I think that's pretty normal. Um, and uh, um, and then often I, I reflect and think about, well, what was it that I did or say, or how did I, how did I present myself that maybe wasn't worth being respected? So I first sort of look inward around, okay, what was it that I may have done that, you know, caused that? Um, but it just gets me a little bit fired up to kind of find that individual and showcase, uh, hey, I, I can contribute, I am worth um, being respected and here's why. But uh, um, yeah, certainly when you're, in a, when you're in a selling capacity, you sometimes just get viewed as just another, hey, that's just as another vendor's rep and yeah, they don't really care how much you know and, and how much you can help them. Um, you're just, um, you know, it's, it's not, uh, it's not intent, but it's just, uh, they're busy and you, you know, there's, a, there's some disrespect for what value you bring. Um, but I think that toughens you up and, and, uh, helps you just, you know, life is like that. Right. And uh, especially if you want to go into, uh, into this profession and you want to take it as far as you can go, you're going to face a lot of disappointment. You're going to face things that don't work out the way you want them to and learning how to overcome that and learn from it really all of that is a gift to be quite honest you know feedback whether it's disrespectful um, attitude or whether it's people telling you hey I don't believe you you're really gonna you're gonna really help we don't want you here um, all that is really a gift because then you can take that and figure out okay how do how do, how do I turn that around and because that's feedback right and how do I make that um, part of uh, who I am, so I'm better the next time around. Um, and so, you know, feedback is, you know, uh, was is great, good or bad, and particularly the bad, because that's where you learn the most from. So you seem to have a lot of wisdom and self-awareness and overall experiences. So what advice do you have for dietetic students? Uh, well, I don't know. Um, know if I've got any magic words, but, um, you know, I can speak about my experiences. And f for me, it was um, really just identifying what it is you really enjoy. What it, where's your passion at? I think no matter what you do professionally, if you find out where your passion's at and really try to go deep on that and get, whether it's a certification or whatever you can do to differentiate yourself, um, is is where a lot of happiness comes and success, how are you define success um, uh, comes. So, uh, um, so just getting exposure is probably the best advice I could probably, uh, you know, suggest is, you know, you may think you want to be this type of dietitian or you want to do this type of work. Um, get yourself outside that comfort zone of what you think feels right because it's comfortable or what you know, get into the things, uh, expose yourself with professions, professionals, uh, um, dietitians that do other types of work um, that um, is not what you've seen or heard about. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, it may confirm, it may validate that's not what you're interested in, or it might open up ideas that, hey, maybe it's not that, but something tangential to that, that I wouldn't even have thought of. So just having that exposure to different types of um, um, work that dietitians do is, is, is really, to me, um, what I did and how I discovered, you know, my initial path of trying to be uh, you know, for me, my point of differentiation starting out was be a, a you know as best as I could be a nutrition support dietitian. So uh, I studied a lot. I got my board certification. I spent time. I seeked out people that at that point in time were were sort of thought leaders in nutrition support and tried to connect with them, talk with them, travel to their where they worked at, and see if I could see patients with them, learn from them. Um, you know, go you know find opportunities to speak and present and and sort of. S sort of car, carve out, I guess, a space that, hey, this is where I'm, my nuance and in, in, in nutrition is, is this, is this. And, and, and I think there's so many more opportunities uh, today than there were even then for 
individuals starting out to kind of find their their lane because um, within nutrition there's so many different places a, a dietitian can work so figure out what it is that you like and to figure that out you have to expose yourself to a lot of different things and once you figure that out you you won't look back you'll be happy you'll enjoy what you do um and you'll be successful because you won't see it as work it'll be something you enjoy and before you know it you'll um, be, you know, one of those top dietitians that I'll be looking for, for whatever subject matter expertise that we'll need. So find what you love and, and, and then just uh, really uh, go after it. Now to go off of that, speaking of exposure, how can students or student dietetic associations join the Orgain Network? Yeah, so um, uh, we have an ambassador program uh, that we're very proud of that we've built and we have over 10,000 uh, ambassadors, uh, many of which are dietitians, but we also have quite a number of um, students as well as interns that are part of our program. So if you go to healthcare.orgain.com and you'll see a uh, request an ambassador account on our website, something we're also proud of, of building that website. Uh, Everything uh, there, you know, with um, with a great team has been built uh, while we've uh, you know pioneered into this space. So, um, so that uh, ambassador program allows for students and interns to be a part of the program, and they'll get complimentary welcome kit of products, and they'll um, also get access to our professional education. Even though you don't need continuing education, there's some great um, free um, webinars. Um, both live and on demand, um, as well as a lot of resources. Um, and then once you become uh, registered, we'll reach out to you um, and then sign you up for the full program. Um, sort of related to that, um, other ways we work with the students and interns. Um, I'm also on the board of the Complete Business Dietetic Internship. Um, and I have uh, interns working with us, um, mostly remotely from around the country. Um, that are uh, interested in, in dietetics, want to have that um, internship, but already have a mindset around wanting to be more of an entrepreneur or going into business or nutrition communications or corporate type of work. Um, so um, they sort of already identified um, that that's what they're interested in. And so I have interns that, um, that work with us, um, with my team um, and with me directly. And I think um, for us, we love that because we got a fresh set of eyes on a lot of the things that we're working on, different marketing activations, campaigns, collateral. Um, and, and so it's great for us. And, and I think it's all also um, very experiential to kind of get a peek behind the curtain as to how a company like Orgain and our healthcare business um, is run. And, um, and then also we do work with um, uh, and sponsor uh, various things with all access dietetics. So that's a, uh, an organization that helps uh, students um, find an internship. So we've uh, done various types of um, sponsorship um, um, programs with them and we'll continue to do that. Um, uh, so, so yeah, so, you know, you might come across or gain as a, as an intern, maybe through the, uh, hearing about from, uh, the complete business dietetic internship, all access dietetics, or simply just go to, um, uh, healthcare.orgain.com and request an ambassador kit. And, um, um, you can learn more about us that way. What kind of qualities do you see in your interns that kind of make them stand out and make them seem like they'll be successful in the future? Mm -hmm. I think it's those that are really proactive, um, the go-getters, especially if you want to go into business, right? Um, you, you know, it's different than clinical dietetics where you walk in, at least, you know, my, my background um, is a little bit dated here, but, you know, you walk in, you, you know, you have your consults, you know what floors have patients on it, you go, you know, you, you interact with the teams, um, the healthcare teams, those patients. Uh, it's a little bit, little, a bit more kind of clear in terms of the work you do. Um, in business, it's not so clear. And, and those that um, are more proactive uh, are going to be more successful. Uh, so the interns that take more uh, responsibility um, and uh, manage their experience with Orgain. So we have them for, you know, four or five, six weeks. Um, and so the ones that want to get the most out of it, it really shows because of the way that they're 
really looking for opportunities, asking for things that they are interested in, seeing that um, while they're with us that they maximize that time. So, uh, so that, that proactive mindset um, and just that attention to detail, uh, I think is so important. And naturally, you know, as part of, I think a lot of dietitians DNA, um, we we're, we're tend to be detail oriented. Uh, um, so, you know, that, that, for us, that's you know still very important. I think just my my point of view, being somebody who can see the big picture, but also has that detail orientation, uh, is really important. Um, and then being proactive and looking for opportunities, and and finding um, you know you know if they find something that isn't right or something that we can do better. Often that's what I ask our interns to, to do is, you know, look at what we're doing and, and find what's not good and give me a proposal around how to fix it. Um, and those that can really think through that, not just, you know, what's wrong and here's a basic solution, but really can think about here's how I do it. Here's the steps I'd take because, you know, they're doing that thinking for me and then I can help implement that so much faster. So that's all part of being proactive as well. But um, just, um, uh, you know, ha having that ownership over your experience, because if they're that way with me as an intern, they're probably going to be that way once they start working and will be, um, you know, thought of as more of a leader, um, ultimately. And those that are viewed as leaders by their peers um, are going to have more opportunities and, and, you know, be able to carve out their path a little bit easier um, because, uh, you know, they're going to separate themselves from the pack. That's really such valuable um, insight and advice from you. But to kind of end off the podcast on a lighter note, what is your favorite food and how extensive are your culinary skills? <laughs> um, gosh, I, I like a lot of different foods. So it's really hard to select um, anything that's um, my favorite. Although um, I would probably say something like uh, um, uh, sushi um, is uh, always a lot of fun because it's not just food, it's, it's an event. Me, when you go and spe especially if you sit at the sushi bar and you engage with the sushi chef and um, maybe share a little sake together and kind of ask them to just be creative and you know don't work off the menu, just come up with something for me. You allow them to be creative and allow them to have a little bit more fun with their, their customer in front of them. And it becomes an experience. And so I, I enjoy that, especially if it's with friends. Uh, um, my wife uh, enjoys sushi too, and uh, she has a nutrition degree as well. So uh, uh, both of us uh, sometimes fight to see who can get into the kitchen and kind of cook, although we have two young kids. And so it's not quite the same type of uh, gourmet meals as it was prior to children. But when we do get to have uh, maybe the kids sleep over and we can have, um, you know, just a date night and we like to cook in the kitchen and that's time that we enjoy together. And, and it's, um, you know, it's, it's quality time for us. So awesome. Thanks so much for sharing all that, Keith. And it's, I find it really inspiring that you're able to find that entrepreneurial aspect while still working in industry. And um, I know for sure, I'll be checking out your guys' podcast. I hope some of our listeners follow along as well as uh, join in on that, that ambassador program. A lot of students are always asking about how they can get involved and connected. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Carl. I, I appreciate the opportunity. And um, thank you very much. Awesome. And for those listening, tune back each week uh, as we share a, a new episode every Sunday uh, with a, a completely different dietitian and different career path.